Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing an update video on my current duty belt as of December 2020. If you're interested in how my duty belt was set up before, you can see that video here. There have been several changes to my loadout and the positioning of my equipment, such as the removal of the drop flex adapter for my holster, and the removal of the baton and its holster. The drop flex adapter had to be removed due to my new department's policy in which drop leg holsters are not permitted. Uh, this is at the insistence of the city council. Uh, they consider drop leg holsters and anything of that sort too militaristic. I disagree, and I argue that it displaces weight and reduces fatigue and injury to the officer. The baton and its holster were removed and instead relocated to my gear bag. It hasn't been used in several years, and it was honestly just taking up space and adding a lot of weight that I felt like, you know, could be better used. The largest difference to the setup is the actual belt itself. Instead of a Sam Brown style belt and buckle, this is actually a Bianchi model 7980 with an Australpin 2.25 inch duty belt Cobra buckle. I find the buckle to be really secure, strong, and easy to use. Uh, the belt could be a little stiffer in my opinion. I may try to add some material on the inside to add support. It does actually have uh, Velcro, the loop portion of the Velcro on the inside of the belt, which you could use actually with a inside belt to help distribute weight, but I might put something in there to stiffen it up a little bit. Switching to this belt and buckle style freed up about one to two inches of real estate on the belt and allowed me to move my 09 triple magazine pouch a little bit more forward. If you're interested in learning more about the magazine holster itself, you can find that video here. This position allows me to perform faster magazine changes and reloads, as well as allowing access to the magazine with my right and left hands. On the gun side of the buckle sits the fold-open glove pouch, also from Bianchi. I found this to be a convenient location for my nitrile gloves that I regularly steal from ambulance screws. I generally carry two to four pairs in the pouch. Underneath the pouch sits this really cool piece of kit from SD Breaching. It's a contoured crowbar that's actually meant to mount to a duty belt so it's always available and within reach. It's lightweight, strong, and hardly noticeable, not to mention really affordable at $30. The next item is the gun and holster itself. The holster is a Safari Land Model 6360 that houses a Glock Model 45 with a Surefire X300 UB mounted. The holster is mounted on a Safari Land low ride belt mount and uses a Safari Land MLS-15 Moly Holster Locking Fork System and a QLS-22 mount. The really cool thing about the fork system and the mount here is it actually allows me to entirely remove the holster and take it off if I'm going to be sitting at a desk for a long time or if I actually want to mount this to a Moly platform. These slide in and uh, stay locked in place. Not the most stable mounting platform, but hey, make do with what you got. I really like this because I can take this holster off because I really like this one and mount it to my other belts without having to buy multiple iterations of the same holster. The holster itself has been modified, and I'm not sure if it'll show up very well in the video, but it's actually been modified itself with an OT Defense ALS slash SLS nub mod. This little nub mod greatly increases the ergonomics of the release mechanism on the holster, which in turn increases draw speed and performance. I highly recommend it. Other than that, I mounted a piece of industrial Velcro to the belt mount to add patches and so on. You can see that here, I kind of have a little Texas flag patch there, I like it, don't hate on me. The next piece of equipment after the holster is a 1011 tourniquet holster with a soft T wide tourniquet. It's mounted to the belt using a tech lock mount. The next two items are open top pouches that hold one set of hinged peerless handcuffs each. These pouches are mounted with straps and secured with snaps. I've only had one come loose when it was hung on something and one of the snaps came undone. Not a big fan of the snaps, but it, like I said, I haven't had any issues. You can actually see some of the snaps right here. It's just a piece of leather or like Safari's laminate leather that snaps onto the back and stays in place. Next on the list here is a Bianchi basket weave radio holster. Not my favorite, but it served me well with the exception of one of the snaps consistently coming loose. And I solved this with an industrial zip tie. You can't really see it, but it's at the bottom here. It goes across. You know, it keeps it pretty secured. The radio itself is fairly basic. It's a Motorola APX 1000. Pretty decent. Uh, nothing really special there. It's a Motorola radio. It's kind of what you come to expect from those. Uh, it is usually equipped with a shoulder mic, but for the ease of this video, I decided not to have that attached when I demonstrate it. Uh, right next to the radio pouch here sits a Streamlight 
88085 ProTac HLX in a Streamlight 88051 tactical holster. So this is the light itself here. Um, I actually have another video on this if you want to check it out right up here. It's uh, pretty compact, it's bright, and it's got pretty decent throw. Um, the main reason I switched to this is because it's brightness and it's rechargeable batteries. Uh, I was tired of buying the CR123A batteries. They do last longer in extreme climates and temperature fluctuations, things like that. But I'm a government employee, so I don't exactly make a shitload of money. Therefore, rechargeable batteries are king right now. The holster is uh, okay at best. It's The retention on the flashlight is acceptable, and it doesn't exactly take up any more space than it needs to. The one issue I have is that it just clips onto the belt via a thin plastic clip that can slide out fairly easy. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So that's how easy it comes off. As you can tell, it's just like this little plastic clip, which uh, does seem to get the job done. But honestly, it, I feel like if it was a fully enclosed loop, I would like it better. But since it's being pressed against my body while the belt is being worn, it keeps that clip pressed in and I haven't had any issues. At the moment, my X26P taser is not mounted yet. I'll most likely have to move around some equipment to find a place for it. Uh, the taser is most likely going to be carried in either a Blackhawk surface style holster or one from 09 since they actually have a model for it as well. As far as other accessories that go on the belt, I have uh, the belt keepers and an HK style clip on the gun side of the Cobra buckle. So this clip right here actually just holds my car keys and things like that. Holds them pretty securely in there. It velcros right in place, no big deal. The three normal belt keepers, which I have right here, are just the regular ones from Safari Land and they're located on either side of the gun and then on the back here next to the blue set of handcuffs. On the other side of the rear, by the red handcuffs, sits a belt keeper from Boston Leather. So I like this one actually because it features a backup hidden handcuff key, not to mention it's just quality leather. Who doesn't like that? And uh, it just works well as a belt keeper and it's always nice to have an extra little handcuff key stashed. And finally located usually between the the flashlight and the magazine pouch is this really cool guy right here called the Carolina Defender Spear Point. This little piece of kit is pretty cool. It functions as a normal quality belt keeper, but also features an integrated polymer push dagger style defensive tool. Now it is all polymer, but it's a great little tool that can help get somebody off you, especially if your gun hand is busy keeping your gun secured in its holster. I keep this mounted on my support hand side just for that reason. If someone's trying to grab my weapon and I'm trying to maintain weapon retention, I can easily access this with my support hand, and it's pretty comfortable, it takes up no space, and it weighs next to nothing. Most of my coworkers actually didn't even notice it until I pointed it out. If you want to learn more about it, you can watch a separate, separate video on it here. Uh, there's also going to be a link for all this stuff down below in case anybody's interested. So, that is my current belt set up for the time being. It's more than likely going to change in the near future with the addition of the X26P Taser and new pouches and holsters I'll be testing from 09 Holster Company. Some of those include the Taser, radio, and handcuff pouches. If you have any other suggestions for what I should put on my belt or what I can change, leave a comment down below. If you're interested in any of the things you saw here, be sure to check out the description box below for links and more. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be doing an update video on my current duty belt as of December 2020. I'll start this video as soon as my neighbors drive off with their loud ass fucking truck with their loud ass fucking exhaust. And then I can get back to actually giving you guys quality content. If you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing to the channel. It really helps us out here at Cop Talks and we would greatly appreciate it. If you want to help support the channel, consider using our affiliate links below for subscriptions, gear, and other items. Make sure to stay tuned for new content by enabling notifications. We generally post every Sunday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, and also drop other videos during the week on occasion. Thanks for watching, and remember to stay safe, stay healthy, stay alive, and I'll catch you in the next one.